Lord, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. We give you thanks for giving us that word that <coughs> is for our instruction and learning so that we may better know you. As we study your word today, then, Lord, we pray that you would be with us, that you would teach us so that we may better know you and know your will and be ever more sure of our salvation in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, yeah, we started talking last time about authority and absolutes, and we see under that first heading there, it's all relative. We talked about some of the things that we see with those attitudes toward authority and absolutes today, that they just kind of don't exist. We talked through then how that relates to the fourth, fifth, and sixth commandment. And, um, you know, with absolutes, we talked a little bit about how, you know, even though there are sort of, there's sort of this idea of, of not really being absolutes in the world today, um, everybody pretty much still agrees with the fifth commandment, you ought not be killing people. Um, but then we also talked about the fact that the sixth one is, is one that, that seems to be abandoned all the time, especially when you consider adultery as being anything that's outside of what God ordained for marriage. So, um, you know, people, people living together before marriage is an example of, of adultery. Um, homosexual relationships are one example of adultery, and things that are, that, are, that are very much accepted in this world today, and things that you cannot say are wrong anymore. Um, so, in that respect, sort of these absolutes have, have gone out the window a bit. Um, even with the fourth commandment, too, you see sort of um, the relationship between parents and children, I think, have, have really changed. Um, I don't know, I think the respect is, is, is less, and I think parents also don't quite take that role in the same way as, as they used to. We talked last week about how... Um, you know, a kid gets in trouble in school, and, uh, you know, when it, well, I never got in trouble in school, of course. But if I would have, in theory, um, my, uh, my parents were not taking my side. Um, they were taking the teacher's side, of course. Um, but now it seems more that um, the parents are on the side of whatever their child says, and now that's kind of changed over time. Um, Let's just, as a refresher, we'll read through the, the small catechism, just those sections of the small catechism on the fourth, fifth, and sixth commandments, um, and, then, and then we'll, we'll uh, continue on with, with discussion questions uh, on question five. So, Carol, would you read from the small catechism that's on page, uh, I'm sorry, they're not numbered, but page two. Oh, that's right, yep, yeah, sorry. John, the fourth commandment. <laughs> Fourth commandment, you shall honor your father and mother that it may be well with you and that may live long upon the earth. What does this mean? You should fear and love God so that we may not despise or anger our parents and masters, but give them honor, serve and obey them, and hold them with love and esteem. Okay, I do the fifth, please. You shall not commit murder. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we may not hurt or harm our neighbor in his body. But help and befriend him in every bodily need, in every need and danger of life and body. And then Micah the sixth, please. You shall not commit adultery. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we may lead a pure and decent life in word and deed, and in each and each love and honor his spouse. I just thought of this as as we were reading through those and, and we see this with all the commandments too, that uh, they all start, Luther's explanation all starts with, we should fear and love God. And so just that reminder there, how these all connect back to that first commandment, <coughs> fearing, loving, trusting God above all things. Um, you know, if we keep the first commandment perfectly, the fourth, fifth, and sixth would follow, right? I mean, they would, they would sort of necessarily follow. When we break the fourth, fifth, or sixth, we also are breaking that first one as well. So, just to notice that connection there. Um, we read through those, those excerpts for the large catechism last time, um, and we'll certainly <coughs> be referencing those again here as we discuss the text. So, let's pick up where we left off in last time with number five then. So, in what ways, according to God's purposes, 
is parenthood distinguished above all positions that are beneath it. How, how Luther understands them as, um, you know, they have that, uh, that position, and they have that position regardless of physical, social, economic position. That's, that's their role. Their, their God-given role in the family is, um, is to be that next to God. So Kyle, you listen to God first, and then you listen to your parents. They are the next authority. Slap John. Yeah. <laughs> we got to talk. I'll see you in catechism in about, uh, what, 10 years? Give or take that. I'm ready. Yeah, so that's what, um, you know, one thing to notice too is that uh, does, does our um, obedience to the fourth commandment ever end? No. No. So, Mary. <laughs> I think I think you do a pretty good job of it, but um, so um, let me ask this though: What is this? Boy, I hope I don't have this in a question that's coming up. Um, is there a difference between honor and obey? Let me give you this example. Um, my parents are Baptists. And if they had their way, so would I be. <laughs> um, so, is honoring God, should I not be? I mean, I mean, should I be? Because, and, and, and um, you know, long ago, they, they had me talk with their pastor and everything else and tried to get me on the straightened arrow, if you will. Um, so, Obviously, I didn't obey them and obey their wishes. So does that mean I haven't honored them? Does that mean I've broken this commandment? What do you think? You obey God rather than man. Right. Yeah. And I would think that during your instruction, you probably gave your sign. I did, though I wasn't as equipped as I probably would be now, to, well, as I hopefully would be now, to give my side. I was a little intimidated. Well, I can see that. <laughs> I think of honoring more as a you know, attitude toward them. And yeah. Being is more of the action that you're doing. You know, that you're following yeah. Your yeah. Honor is much more about an attitude than it is about just just the actions. Because, <laughs> you know, on that note, can you obey your parents and not honor them? Yeah. I told you, you to do something, and you just do it because not yeah. because you want to. But you do it begrudgingly, yeah. and yeah. you know, mutter. You never did that, did you? No. Never. <laughs> we'll get to the to the lying commandment here. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think there's a difference between honor and obey, and you know, the relationship, of course, changes as as you become an adult, but that honor for your parents that really never goes away. There's no, there's no end to that to be seen in Scripture. Um, but it's different than obey. Obviously, obviously, we obey God rather than men. That's very important. So um, if our parents would ever lead us in the wrong way, of course, we, we want to obey God and His Word first and foremost. Um, so number six, then. How does Luther understand the word honor? This is, yeah, figured. Um, what additional words help to describe honor, and how does honor go beyond love? Um, <coughs> esteem. Yeah, esteem. Well, the, the large catechism says that honor requires not only that parents be addressed kindly and with reverence, but also in heart and body we demonstrate that we value them very highly. Yeah. Yep. Um, in uh, it talks about um, you know honor, including not only love but modesty, humility, submission. Um, 
those kind of things. And 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 really, what Mary said, you know, it's an attitude of the heart rather than just actions. It's it's uh, honor is much more of an attitude. Uh, and we know, especially from our study of Proverbs and from other things that we've looked at, that it's really God is after the heart, <coughs> not, not the outward actions anyway. So that's why that's why this commandment isn't isn't uh, you shall obey your father and mother, but it's honor. It's it's a matter of the heart. Yep. So, number seven, then, what does it mean to be a representative, and how are parents God's representatives in their family? An authority? Yeah, a representative. Um, yeah, an authority. <coughs> next to God. Yeah, next to God. You think of the idea of standing um, in behalf of somebody else, right? Um, you know, like 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 you think of our representatives in Congress are um, they're supposed to stand in place of us. They're supposed to be sort of our voice. We vote for them, and then they're they're our voice. Um, there's that. Uh, there's. There's really, the most important thing that parents can do, of course, is raise their kids in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Um, Ephesians 6, verse 4, talks about um, the importance of raising children, right, in and, and the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Um, and really, good parents are instruments of God's blessings, aren't they? Because um, we know, of course, by our sinful nature, that we are not going to know anything about God at all, um, on our own, and 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 so it's it's our parents who put that word of God into our hands um, and have that very important role of instructing. And of course, we all have have that role as church members too. Not not the primary role like parents have, but we also, um, you know, in in the sense of, of of the church family, have a responsibility for our young ones like Kyle to. You know, make sure that he is raised in that fear and instruction and admonition of the Lord. Uh, but primarily to the parents. God has given them a role. Um, number eight. In what ways does modern life undermine authority in the family? We maybe talked about some of these things last week, but what do you think on this? <coughs> sure does. It's the F. Well, how, though? Think for yourself. Yeah, yeah, kids have to think for themselves, right? Make up your own mind. Right. Yeah, we've talked about that. Um, I'm pretty sure we talked about that in the book of Proverbs, right? Where um, <coughs> we talked about with, with parents who want to give their kids the choice as to whether they're going to go to church or not, or what religion they're going to be. And we we kind of talked about what a dangerous thing that was in, in our study of Proverbs because, again, we're not going to make the right choices by nature. Um, we need good Christian parents to indoctrinate us. And indoctrinate such a bad word, you know. But, but that's what we need. It's not really a bad word, but in today's society it's a bad word, indoctrinate. But that's, yeah. That's why we have catechism to begin with. Um, it's a... Uh, you know, that, that instruction in the truth of God's word. Any other ideas on that? How does modern life under, undermine the authority of the family? Well, that seems to be everything. Question of authority. Mm -hmm. where, do you get, where, where do you come up with that? Where do you tell me what to do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there is very much that attitude. And they see TV shows with kids sass and back to their parents and stuff. And sure. They think that's the way it is. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, kids shows that have that. Maybe even with a laugh track in the back yeah. as they sass their parents, yeah. Yep. Kate? Okay. This isn't really good to number eight, but this commandment talks about children obeying their parents. What role do parents have as far as 
This is going to require parents for us. Do you have to be a good parent? What do you mean by that? So we know that children should be raised in the training and admission of the Lord, but like how far does that extend? You know? How much should parents discipline their kids? How much should they adults be involved in their lives? Well, I mean just like just like the children's role you know, in honoring their parents never ends. I, I'm not sure that, that the parents' role really should ever end in, um, in giving that instruction to their children either. Obviously, the relationships change as you become an adult and you move out of the house. Um, but there should be guides. They should be guides. Should be guides. Right. Always should be guides. Yeah. Um, Basically, if you see your neighbor, your brother has fault against you, go and tell him his fault between, you know. Yeah, that's, part of it. that's true. And that's Matthew 18, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and that's more, um, that's, that's. Not, not, to, not to go and prove that I'm there, or I'm, I'm telling you what to do, but to point out the error. Right. And that's broader, of course, right? That's, that's, that's again, um, what we were talking about a little bit. That's the whole church's responsibility for, for each one of us who are part of this church family. But um, even more so than the parents, it's their primary responsibility um, to be that guide really throughout life. Yeah, while that parent and child relationship changes over time again, um, you know, the, the, the honoring always happens and that guiding by the parents always happens. Those, that part of the relationship <coughs> doesn't really change. Children should always be able to look up to their parents, yeah. not down. Yep. Yeah, what they say after I got to be 25 years old, I found out how smart my parents were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. How about, okay. how about when your parents, you look up to your parents, you obey your parents. But how about as you get older and you start feeling your parents weren't always in the right? Yeah, that's... Because um, that is kind of hard to keep looking up to them if they're going against what you think is right. Yeah. Um, you know, so you always have that attitude still of honoring them, of course. Yep. But, um, yeah, I, you know, again, honor doesn't mean that you just take, you know, what they say always as, you know, well, it's right because my parents said it, um, or because I was raised that way. Um, you know, especially when it's something spiritual, when it, you know, has to do with God's word. Um, you know, back to we obey God rather than men. God's word is the final authority. Um, are you talking about that kind of a situation? Or? Well, it could be either yeah. way. But either way. Like, like, I was raised in the ELCA. Yep. We always believed we were doing the right thing, going to church, going to Sunday school, getting confirmed. Right. Yep. Yeah, so, you know, again, that is one of those situations of you know, obeying God rather than men. Um, I mean, you know, in one sense, of course, they were they were right to take you to church to have you confirmed that they. But yeah, they had you in the wrong church body. Hey, join the crowd. Me too, by the way. <laughs> so we found our way. <laughs> Since you got kind of open forum here, but yeah, I was thinking with my own kids when they became of age. My, I'll think of our oldest. Uh, his respect. To us as parents, uh, was real borderline. Yeah. So I says, okay. What we thought was borderline. Yes. Well, and we uh, made arrangements for him to go up to Eau Claire. And it says, hopefully you can learn there. Apparently, I had missed something in your training. That mm -hmm. Disrespect, honor, and other parents and stuff. I said, hopefully you can get that in Eau Claire. Well, it didn't work out with mother here to, to allow that to happen forever, but uh, he ended up coming back home. But just that short term he was there, 
Yes. He learned immediately. Yeah. More respect and attitude. Yeah. And he also learns a lot of the kids are there because of um, um, what more discipline or because he felt like he was a good kid and he wasn't a bad kid. Right. Where they were doing some of what he thought were bad things that he never did. That's where he was there to help them too. So. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, that's kind of the neat thing of ILC. <coughs> you've got, um, you've, you're, you're just surrounded by that environment. And, you know, ILC obviously isn't a perfect place either, but it's, um, you know, you've got, uh, you've got all those professors there. Um, you've, got, you've got all of your fellow students who, you know, were raised in God's Word. And, yeah, so it can be sort of that encouragement to, to one another. And, you know, that's not really... Um, well, wait, what do I want to see? Um, I don't know, that's probably an example of good parenting right there, by you know, sending them to school. It's the best I could do. Well, oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I mean, at some point, you know, um, yeah, I mean, if you're, if they're not hearing your voice, send them to someone who's going to speak that same word of God. You know, sometimes that's what... I'll tell you, you know, from about the age of 15 to, I don't know, 30. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know, maybe even longer. I, you know, you know, there's a time where we just don't want to hear our parents, and it's and, it, and it's wrong, and it's sinful, of course, according to this commandment, but, um, you know, sometimes wise parents do put other voices into, you know, our, and that's not giving away your parental role or anything, but it's... Um, you know, putting putting God's word in front of them in maybe a little bit of a different way. You know, obviously the pastor can help with that too. With, um, you know, other other members of of the church here. But yeah, that's one of the blessings of of what ILC is all about. Yeah. yeah you should never be afraid to ask for help. But yeah. Yep. That's a that's exactly right. Um, there's not a one of us that's doesn't need help in some area. Um, yeah, I haven't met the person yet. So. All right. Um, anything else here on the fourth commandment before we move on to some of those questions with the fifth? We'll pick up a little bit again here on the fourth as we go forward. But let me check the time, sorry. I need a clock right there, by the way. Um, so I don't have to look at my phone. <laughs> no, 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 you don't have to do it right now. Okay. <laughs> All right. Number nine. List attitudes and actions that God forbids in the fifth commandment. Um, murder. Murder. Okay, there we go. What else? Hurt or harm. Yep, hurt or harm. Lies. Lies. Um. And hurt or harm doesn't have to be bodily harm, right? Hurt or harm in his body doesn't say in his body. Well, yeah, it does say in his body. Extending, um, extending from from the catechism, though, of course, we know that 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 just hatred is is murder. That comes from the Sermon on the Mount. Um, but yeah, yeah. So so what it says here, it does have to do with harm in the body specifically. Yep. Um, Prize fighting. Prize fighting, yeah. <laughs> yep. So yeah, so all of those things. Um, number ten then. List attitudes and actions that God desires in the fifth commandment. So you remember with the commandments, of course, the, they they take us through well, the, the catechism takes us through what God doesn't want us to do and then what he does want us to do. So what what are those attitudes that God desires in the fifth commandment? Help him. Yeah. Help. Speak well. Yep. Be a friend to him. Yeah. So help, defend, deliver, protect. Um, all those kinds of words. Um, all right. Moving on to, to ideas about the sixth commandment then. What qualities and behaviors illustrate a chaste, sexually pure, and decent life? Not having sex 
Right. right. Yeah. Or, or even you know a little bit broader, outside of marriage at all. Um, and to be more specific, because you have to be in this day and age, within the um, confines of godly marriage, right? So, <coughs> homosexual marriage doesn't count. Um, so, list our obligations as Luther notes towards sexuality. Have respect. Yep. For the opposite sex. Right. Yep. Respect for the opposite sex. So yeah, it has to do with, you know, treating each other, you know, as fellow brothers and sisters, you know. Um, you think of that that relationship that you would have with with your own siblings and how you would want to 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 defend and protect them and you want to think of, of of really everybody in that in that respect with respect to this commandment. Um, Particularly to your spouse. Yeah, yep, absolutely. <coughs> and then 13, in what ways has marriage lost its status as a blessed and excellent institution in today's world? Um, and what benefits does God bring to society through marriage? So maybe the first part of that first. How has marriage lost the sense of blessedness and excellence? People aren't getting married. People aren't getting married. Yeah. People aren't getting married. Yep. Yeah. Getting married for the wrong reasons. Um, yeah, I married for the money. I don't think that was it. I don't think that was it. Is that the right reason? No. I married because she was cute. That may not also. That, that may also not be the right reason. See if we can get her to turn red. Uh, uh. You may be in trouble when you get home. Well, I almost always am. Um, all right. Um, yeah, yeah, people don't get married. And how many jokes do you hear about, you know, guys get together. Maybe guys do this more than women do. You know, get together and, oh, you know, make my fun. wife, yeah, you know. Make fun. Yeah, make fun. Why do we do this? Or what about like Elizabeth Taylor? How many husbands did she have? Six. Or the woman Seven. in the Bible? Well, well, yeah, yeah, we just had that in the husbands, sermon text. Six, yeah. And one she has is not her husband. Yeah. There's no respect for the marriage relationship. Right. And not just there's no respect for it, but it's often not seen as such a, you know, such a binding. wonderful estate. Well, yeah, and certainly not binding. Yep. You know, more than half of marriages end in divorce. And um, that number is not, doesn't get so much better even among Christians. <coughs> well, I don't think they have that respect for it anymore. Right, yeah. Society. It's just, um, go ahead. Society itself, you, you see it in the literature you read television, right. radio, whatever, you know, marriage and fidelity is attacked, uh, probably almost constantly. So. Yeah. I think there's not that feeling anymore that, you know, when when people get married that, that we're in this. For the long term. We're in this for the long term. Fully realizing that when we make those bow, oh, vows for better, for worse, the for worse is going to happen. Um, I mean, I mean, it is. The for better happens too, by the way. Yeah. But the for worse is going to happen, um, even if it is mostly my fault. Um, <laughs> um, man, I always get in trouble when we talk about my marriage. It's okay. There are times that are hard in marriage. Well, sure. Are worse, if you will. And I think, but I think there's this idea, maybe more so than 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 at other times, where people think, oh, we're gonna get married and everything's just gonna be blissful and happy all the time, and we're just gonna, you know. I'll change. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just, I mean, I mean, in what, 
In, in what other relationship that you have in life does that happen? Even, even you know, best of friends with somebody, you fight. You know, you fight with your parents, even if you're close with them, you fight with them. Fight with your siblings, even if you're close. I mean, you know, it happens in every relationship. Why, you know, why would marriage be any different? Um, but, uh, oh, go ahead, Kate. The beautiful thing about God's divine marriage is you're committed, you're, you're not going to just leave if something makes you really mad. Right. You're committed to loving each other, loving the other person first. And that's yeah. what makes marriage work. And you don't give, you know, when you don't give it a chance through the hard times, you don't give a chance for God to show you the blessings of going through some of those things. Because sometimes when you go through the harder parts of life, that, you know, your relationship becomes closer than if you hadn't gone through those things at all. So. This is one of the dangers of modern television. Yeah. They completely denigrate marriage. It's not something that you want to stay in for the long haul. Yeah. Legalized adultery. Mm -hmm. It's almost easier to separate yourself from marriage nowadays. <laughs> if it just doesn't seem right, I'm going to quit. Right. Yeah, that's the attitude today. Yeah. Um, I think of a show that was on in, what was this, the 80s maybe? Mm -hmm. Married with Children. You ever seen that? <laughs> Just, just a terrible show. Um, I mean, it's just, just terrible. Um, and they just have this awful marriage, and it's just, well, anyway. Um, and it's just gotten worse from there. I mean, I mean, think of a TV show where, where people have a happy marriage. I don't know. There isn't any, is it? No. That I know of. Or once, at least I don't watch them. Yep. Once they. Once they uh, didn't make them sleep in separate beds on TV, it all went to... <laughs> Remember that? The old ones? They, they, they had separate yeah, yeah. They had separate beds. Same bedroom, but different. Yeah. Yeah. Don, did you have something? I was just... My mind was going to... Oh. You know, there's only so much that we can do ourselves to help prevent what we're seeing. Right. Prayer is our greatest value. Yes, absolutely. And from there on, we're... We're limited as to how much we can help other than what we see personally contacted with. Yeah, and that's and that's I mean what um, you know what our role is. Yeah, we're not you know to think that we're going to change the whole world's ideas of what marriage ought to be is probably not you know that's not going to happen. But you know who are the people that are around us? You know that we can influence that we can that we can help out through you know maybe difficult times that they're going through their marriage. So you think of your your church family, maybe extended, you know, other family and friends, other people maybe that you know in the CLC and that kind of thing. Um, you know, how can you be a help to them? I mean, I think that's probably the place where we can have the most impact on, you know, we're not going to change the world's ideas of what marriage ought to be, but we can hold marriage as this blessed and excellent state that it really is. And help others around us to do the same. Part of that being the salt and the light. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of give a good example. It might not always appear that people are watching, but uh, once in a while they do. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Pastor, you talked. Sorry, Pastor Holler. You yeah. talked about um, media, and I saw a movie years ago now uh, that was about a couple that was really struggling in their marriage, but it was written from a Christian perspective. And it challenged the guy in the movie, the husband, to really love his wife and love her first, even though she was being really mean to him. Fireproof. Fireproof is the name of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. And and I found it to be, you know, so encouraging, such a light in this world of bad media. So it was a great example of how um, it can work out and if you really fight for it, so marriage can work out. Yeah. So I I uh, suggest that movie. Yeah, it's a Christian movie. Um, what's his name? Kirk Cameron. Is yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The, the guy's a fireman. I think that's why it's kind of... Right, right. And so that's why it's called Fireproof. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and he, he, he undertakes this challenge. You know, he's just complaining about, 
you know, his wife this and that, and, and, and she really isn't nice to him. Well, neither one of them is nice to the other. And he takes up this challenge that he's going to be nice to her no matter what, and she ends up, well, watch the movie, don't let me ruin the whole thing. Well, there it is, don't, don't even bother now, since the pastor ruined the movie. <laughs> All right. That's good. At least there's one among many. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. It's, it's one. But... Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, we've come to the end of our time, and we didn't manage to get through all the way. But that's pretty much what we do. So um, we'll pick up with this next time, which won't be for a couple of weeks. So um, I'll have to look ahead a little more and see and see what to have you read ahead. But um, we'll finish this sheet up next time, and... Yeah, I don't know. I'll let you know within the next couple of weeks what um, what we'll cover again on the 23rd will be our next Sunday Bible class. All right, any other thoughts before we close? All right, then let's close with a blessing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen.